Good morning, we're going to be having a testimony uh, from a man I met called Jason Wilkinson. I first met him about three years ago in the drop-in and street church uh, where he first started making steps towards his faith in Jesus. He's got a remarkable story, I hope you enjoy it, um, but unfortunately we lost the first bit of the video. I don't know where it went, it's off in the Zoom cloud somewhere I guess. But we pick up the story where Jason is in the, the light, Lighthouse Project and uh, has, has gone there and is moving along in his walk with God. So do enjoy. You're on heroin. Yeah, I was on heroin for 23 years. Yeah, I was using a lot of other street drugs as well. Uh, I went into phase one. I was a complete mess. Uh, malnourished, severely underweight. Uh, I was just under 13 stone in total. I mean, I remember you being yeah, very skinny. Yeah, I was. And for somebody with my height as well, it, I always thought I looked all right till I went into rehab and I actually saw it. Because in the rooms, you've all got your separate bedrooms. Yeah. Um, there was a full-length mirror in mine. And the first few nights I was there, because I was homeless, I was actually sleeping on the floor for the first few nights because I couldn't get comfy in a bed. Yeah. But I woke up one morning and I saw myself through the mirror and I was actually shocked at how I looked. But yeah, it's... I did, did a withdrawal in there from the methadone and everything else. And... It, I, I was expecting it to be very rough and to be extremely ill through the withdrawal. But it was one of the easiest detoxes I've ever done in my life. Wow. Yeah, the time before when I got clean, I was, I was really bad for about six to eight weeks. Uh, I didn't sleep for 17, 18 days. Uh, mentally and physically, I was a wreck. Um, but when I did my detox in the carpenter's arms, it, it was totally different. Oh, wow. I was surrounded by, I was surrounded by good people. Uh, I was eating regular. In fact, I didn't even really get a withdrawal for some reason. Well, maybe it was all the prayer. Do you know, I put it down. I was asked once when I gave my testimony to the new lads that came in, uh, when did I realise that God was real? When I first went into the program, I was open to it. Uh, I'd been reading the Bible. I was doing daily devotions with the rest of the lads. Um, the day I quit using methadone, I actually pray prayed for God, to God for some grace and, and, and the courage to do what I was about to do. Yeah. Uh, I went to... I went to bed that night knowing that I'd, I'd sleep that night but the next day that's when all the sickness and everything had start for the withdrawal well i woke up the next morning had a shower went, uh, did all my daily routine went to bed that night and i thought this is it i'm not going to sleep uh, got in bed fell to sleep woke up at eight nine o'clock the next morning wow and this just and this just kept happening every night. I'd, I'd go to bed, I'd sleep, I'd be eating. There was no withdrawals at all. No uh, vomiting, no diarrhea, no muscle aches, no joint aches, no shakes, no nothing. It, it was, I've never experienced anything like that because I have done withdrawals several times and each one is, is worse than the last. And for that to happen, it, it can only be put down to prayer and God's grace. Yeah. So tell me where you are at now then, Jason. You've obviously been walking with God for a few years now. So what's happened in your life since? Uh, well, I did phase one. I went on and did phase two uh, for about eight months, which is to take you to the gym three times a week. You get work duties. Uh, you learn about God. Uh, you go out. Uh, we did... Uh, a high impact course which is for young and troubled teenagers yeah uh, going out sharing our testimony with them the experiences we've had to try and 
stop from going down that same route. Uh, after about six, seven months, I left phase two. I went into phase three, which uh, helps you get back into the community. Uh, I was volunteering for like a furniture place, helping people that aren't as well off, that's living in deprived areas, you know, delivering them cheap furniture that's been reconditioned and things like that. Yeah. Um, at about four or five months doing that, then my time at phase three was coming to an end. Uh, so I started panicking a little bit because I, I didn't know what I was going to do, where I was going to go. Yeah. Uh, so I made a phone call to the lighthouse at Chesterfield, Brimington. I ended up there for a few months. And then just before I left phase three, uh, which is a, a long story, uh, because you don't, you're not allowed any contact with the outside world apart from one call. Yeah, probably every couple of days, something like that. But when I go into phase three, I'm always allowed mobiles. So I kept myself to a phone because I'd actually got money to spend rather than wasting it all on drugs. Uh, I set myself a Facebook account up and uh, a contact came up, which was my wife who we'd been separated for 17 years. And God put it on my heart that I needed to put things right with a lot of people. Yeah. And my wife Tracy, was one of them. So I wasn't expecting a reply from her because of the things that I'd done in the past. But I sent her a message anyway, apologizing for the things I'd done. And uh, she messaged me back saying that there was no need to apologize. She understands, she understood addiction and the things what it did. And, how it made people act. Uh, and we started talking over time. Well, now, after 17 years of being separated, I've reconciled with my wife. Uh, I've been living back with her just over a year. We're in a small village just on the outskirts of Blackpool. Uh, I attend the local, well, two local churches, one in the village, one about a mile and a half down the road, uh, which is St. Mark's, they run a soup kitchen wow. once during the week on Sunday as well. Uh, I've shared my testimony at two churches local uh, at the soup kitchen. Uh, I've done little chats online to people that's been put in touch with me that's still in active addiction, want to help. Uh, we were supposed to be setting up a celebrate recovery group in Easter that's just gone. But yeah. that's had to be put on the back burner for a little while till all this is over. But I've been asked to do that as a peer mentor because of what I've done and what I've been through. Yeah. Wow. So yeah, that, it, every, everything's doing it's brilliant. Don't get me wrong, I still have moments, but now I've got everything that I need to know not to walk back down that path. It's, it's, I don't want that anymore, ever again. It's, my life's changed that drastically in the last couple of years. It's, when, I, when I, I look back and see who I was and what I was doing, I don't see it as me anymore. Wow. So, so God's really changed stuff in your life? God has truly blessed me. He's in good, isn't he? Way. He's yeah, so he's good. Amazing. Uh, I still have regular contact with a lot of the guys that I did rehab with. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah, some of them, unfortunately, have relapsed, but yeah. I still keep in contact with as many as I can to try and talk them back around, going back into rehab, getting clean. But well, it's their path, not mine. But I just let them know that I'm always here for them, because it's, it, it's it's what addicts need. It, it, it's it's a massive struggle because as an ex addict myself, I always felt that I'd got no one and nothing to turn to. Yeah. And then when I att attended the street church, I found out that these strangers that were working there. They were full of compassion and love and they were non-judgmental and 
I needed that to help me bring myself out and get me to where I am. Well, that's, that's really fantastic, Jason. That's really fantastic. And uh, bless you. And we just Thank pray you. that you'll continue walking with God. It's exciting yeah. to see you. And, uh, yeah, and hopefully we'll get you over to our church at some stage so you can talk to the people live. 